Hi! Welcome back. As promised, this is the recipes of the week video. I know you guys have been looking forward to this. I also am looking forward. I'm still trying to figure out like filming mechanics, so you'll see it's a little bit messy, but I thought I would sit down here and walk y'all through the recipes, what we've planned, cooked, and eaten for the entire week. During this time, we didn't order in, we didn't do any grocery shopping, and it's very simple. Like I feel like the ingredients that we've used are all like either pantry staples, something that you'll probably find in your house already, or something that you can very easily go out and get. And there'll also be ingredients that are very versatile that you can use for like several different meals. So I'm gonna walk you through it. I hope that makes better sense. Right before we jump in, I wanna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where there are thousands of classes and tutorials and workshops for you to do. Premium membership gives you access to all of these different classes from hand lettering to arts. If you're feeling kind of bored, you wanna do something fun. They give you step-by-step -step, like drawing exercises. So I did this one that was like painting with gouache, that's really fun. They also have classes on productivity, how to use a specific software, and even something as, I mean, obscure as I would think, as like starting a new podcast. Because that's something y'all keep telling me to do, so I'm like kind of looking into it. If you are bored at home, why not use Skillshare to like invigorate your mind, really stimulate it, and like get it thinking, you know? All of the classes are split up into episodes, so they're like palatable little videos that you can just watch mindlessly, you can follow along. And they actually have cooking videos as well, so like knife skills, basic Italian cooking, that sort of thing. So if you're interested, Skillshare is actually offering a free two-month membership to 1,000 of you. So the first thousand people to sign up to the link will get it. And if after two months you're like, okay, I'm feeling this, and you want to get an annual membership that's less than $10 a month. At this time, you can pick up a new hobby, do some fun art projects, or learn that software that you've been lying about, you know, on your resume. So do it. Okay, click the link down below, and thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Okay, I have my handy daddy Bujo, and I'm gonna walk you all through all of the recipes for the week. For Monday, I went back to one of the first things that I've cooked that was not Maggie Me, but it's like really quite impressive and like quite cute. And it's super, super easy to make. It's wontons. Just buy a packet of pre-made wonton skin from any good leading supermarket. You can find the ones that are like eggy and yellow. That's the one that I like. If you don't like the eggy kind of taste, you can always go for the white ones. For the rest of the ingredients, it's really simple. You choose what you want to put in. You could just put minced meat, like any kind of minced meat. I like minced pork, so that's what I put in. I also love my garlic, so sometimes I mince it, sometimes I just like do a rough chop. If you like, you can put chives, pasty, spring onion if you want a more subtle taste, or nothing at all. I also measure nothing, so I just put in a little bit of oyster sauce. If you have abalone sauce, that works as well. Uh, white wine vinegar, just a little bit of white pepper, and then adding a little bit of light soy sauce. And then just a little teaspoon of sugar. You don't want too much, but I feel like the sweetness really helps tie in the meat, like the salty and the vinegariness of the meat, like it just helps, I don't know why. And then like I said, a little bit of crushed garlic. I tend to chop up a bunch of them and then just keep it in the fridge. So whenever I need to use it, I just dump a little out. It's very convenient. And then of course, my favorite ingredient, <laughs> sesame oil. I just love the smell of sesame oil, girl. Oh my god. And then just mix it all together. You can choose to let it sit in your fridge and marinate for like an hour or two, but you can also get to work like right now. I'm just gonna teach y'all the most simple way to fold the wontons because if I'm at home, I'm just cooking for myself. I like to taste like the skin and the meat like separately. I don't like to put all of them together. I take a bunch of the skin, I set it aside, I take one piece, I put a little bit of meat in the middle. Not too little, not too much. If you put too much, it might not be able to close properly. If it's too little, it's like not shook to eat. So you just wanna put like a nice, I would say like one third of a spoonful and you also have like a little sauce dish or a ramekin full of water and then you dip your finger into the water and then you run your fingers along the rim of the wonton skin that dissolves the flour and gets the skin ready to be like stuck onto each other and then you just repeat this process and just go 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 until you either run out of the skin or the meat <laughs> here's another way that i'm doing it like i don't like this way as much it looks a little more origami like but i don't like it as much i just like them flat i don't know what to say i'm a basic flat bitch you also want to try your best to standardize the amount of meat that you're putting on the dumplings. Like don't put some that are overstuffed and then some that are understuffed because you want all of them to cook together at the same time. And I don't know about you but this is like really therapeutic. Like I enjoy doing it very very much. You can make an entire batch of them and then you can freeze them or you can put them in the fridge for a couple of days. It's super easy to store so as you can see now I'm just lining them up really nicely and I'm using beeswax wraps. If you don't have wraps like these you can always use cling wrap or you can always use like aluminium foil. Okay 
Okay, so I'm gonna show you the first way that I like to cook them, which is just to pan fry them. So generously grease your pan with some kind of frying oil. So something neutral like grapeseed oil, vegetable oil, knife oil. I like knife oil because it's like a mix of like canola, sunflower, and peanut oil that just has a really nice like fragrant um, smell. If you don't put enough oil, it's gonna not turn brown and it's still gonna burn. It's just gonna be an ugly mess. And so put the wontons in one by one, space them out. I like to go like a medium low to medium heat. I don't like to go too fast because I want to make sure that the filling inside is cooked through before I burn the skin. So here's me just, you know, tossing them around. And the thing about these wontons is because they're so thin, they can burn within like a frame of like 5 to 10 seconds. So the moment they're golden brown, like just take them off all at once. Put them on a plate that's lined with a paper towel and then... You're good! Because this was for Monday's lunch, I really like didn't want to make like a whole thing. I have this udon cup noodle. It's so good. This is from Don Don Donkey. I don't know if Don Don Donkey is still open at this time, but it was like 2 50 and it's the best instant noodle like I've ever eaten in my life. It's so good! It's like a nice like shoyu miso udon. The texture is really nice. The broth is amazing. Oh, I just like love it. And it was so easy and this way you can sort of incorporate like real food into like your instant food. So that was my lunch. Tell me that doesn't look good. You guys, tell me that doesn't look good. That looks so good. Yum! And then for Monday's dinner, because I had so little faith in myself, I figured, you know what, this is my first time trying this recipe. And this recipe actually came out of necessity because I realised the basmati rice that I bought kind of weeks ago had bugs in them. There weren't a lot, but it was like enough for me to freak out and be like, we need to wash all of this immediately. And then I had to cook the entire 3 kg worth of basmati rice all at once. I was like, why not try to make like the closest relative I could possibly make to like actual biryani? Because I don't have a lot of like the spices. So I was like, I'm just gonna see what I can do. At times like this, Google is your best friend. It was certainly my best friend. So I just Googled for biryani rice. I'm gonna list all of the recipes that I followed down below by the way, because I still am like a recipe follower. It's just that I adapt like as and when I should and when I can. So for example, stuff like the ginger garlic paste I didn't have. So I just swapped out with onion powder and garlic powder. I just made do law, okay? We were pretty lucky that we had tomato and I feel like the tomato was like the hero ingredient because it really added this nice tang to it. And then the spices for the kuska, we didn't have like anything. We didn't have cardamoms, we didn't have cloves, except for turmeric. And we didn't even have red chilli powder, so I just used red chilli flakes and that seemed to work. A lot of the process was like really frying the onions and heating up the turmeric. Thank god I had turmeric. Then adding the tomatoes, the broth, and then the rice and just like stirring it. And essentially it wasn't briyani, but it was just like really nice, inspired, flavoured rice. That was really nice actually, that turned out really well and I'm kind of bummed that I didn't film it. Also because I just didn't know if it was gonna work. Alright, Tuesday for lunch. I'm a big fan of like leftovers and like eating what we have and then making something new for dinner. So for lunch, I took out the wontons again. So right here, we're gonna make wonton mee. So we decided to go with like Xiaopai Chai because that's one of my favourite like vegetables ever. And then as you can see, we also have like the standard few things like light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, sesame oil, knife oil, sugar, table salt and a little bit of garlic. I like to use my knife and slam it against the garlic. It crushes it, releases the allicin, the two-parted palsy. And then removing the skin and just plopping the smashed garlic into the pan. The recipe actually told us to start off with a cold pan so that the garlic can infuse with the oil as it heats up and it doesn't burn as fast. And then once we feel like it's infused enough, like without it burning, we remove the oil and we put it aside. I think the recipe that we were following wasn't that great because we made this garlic oil and then after that they were like never mentioned again and we were like where, where, where does this garlic oil go? We put it into the noodles but we're like maybe you should put it in the veggies, I don't know. And um, as you can see here, an epic fail. <laughs> the garlic like totally slid out of the pan. Clean the pan, we get started on prepping the veggies. Very important to wash your veggies all the way, especially you sell by time, you need to sort of like pluck them apart. And then very quickly, we're just gonna blanch it in the water, make sure that it's cooked through but not super soggy. And then drain it, run it through with cold water to make sure it stops cooking and then just set it aside. Okay, now we're gonna move on to prepare the noodles. This like Cantonese noodle that I bought, it was from Fair Price. They come in four different bundles. One bundle is one serving, so we just put two servings in. This comes with a soup seasoning packet and it's suitable for wonton mee. So we decided to cook the noodles dry as per usual and then we use the 
seasoning to create soup base for the wontons to be in. Cooking it over boiling water for around 2-3 to three minutes, don't overcook it, it should be like a Chinese al dente. I like to like stir fry additionally like a little bit in a wok or in like a non-stick sort of bigger pan. You don't have to do this, like you can just apply the sauces straight away and then mix it yourself. So once again, I drain the hot water as quickly as I can, I add a little bit of tap water to lower the temperature and then just sort of like you know Okay, at this point, we realized we had a piece of like pork loin that we had marinated and frozen like for two days now. So we were just here like heating it up and trying to pan fry it. At this point, we're also adding half the packet of the soup seasoning and then adding our wontons in like just before we're about to serve it. Because it overcooks really easily, the skin starts to tear and the meat starts to come out. So if you don't want your wonton to fall apart, you want to put in like right before you want to serve it. So I would say like a good one to two minutes. And so working quickly because you don't want the noodles to clump up, I put the noodles into the wok and I just sort of sh 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 try to separate it and then adding in a little bit more of that garlic oil. In a bowl, we separately mixed in the wonton mi like noodle sauce and the thing is like I don't know what is up with my personal brand of like dark soy sauce but every time I add like just a little bit, it turns everything like a really dark brown. Mine might be like an extra intense one so you can see that literally the noodles are so dark. It is what it is. It just looks so bad. You shouldn't cook it for too long. At this point, you should really just thoroughly mix the noodles and make sure that everything is coated. And then the moment you feel like it's done, you can always like pinch a little bit and taste it. The moment the noodle texture is like A-OK, -okay, just take it out of the pan. If you don't have the pot loin, it's fine. Just add a little bit of that veggie. You can serve with just the noodles even and then have the soup and have the wonton. You can also garnish with a little bit of spring onion like we had some lying around so we did that. And you can put some in the soup too and that's the meal. Okay, Wednesday for lunch, like I'm not too big of like a lunch eater. So sometimes when I'm really busy, especially for filming, I'll just make a light quick snack for myself. So this is one of my go-to snacks. I love it. It's basically just like slices of tau kwa and pan fried. I like to use vegetable oil, it's just a little bit lighter and I add a little bit of whatever I feel like. So sometimes it's garlic powder, sometimes it's paprika, sometimes it's just salt and white pepper. For some reason, I think white pepper goes really really well with tofu more than black pepper. I think black can be a little bit overwhelming and they should take some time to turn into like a lovely golden brown. I lean towards like the less oil side just because I think like cooking it and leaving a little bit of that softness and that juiciness in the tau kwa is like really nice but if you want to do fried you can go ahead. And then for dinner we made mee soto which is really fun. It's just something I've been craving for a while like I love 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 mee soto. I cook like chicken breast for Nunu. Like Nunu really loves a good chicken breast so just nice when I was getting the chicken breast I saw that they also sell like mee soto little spice packets and I was like this is great. When I'm grocery shopping now I just want things that are easy for me to think of recipes with ready and simple to make so like herb and spice packets like are the best for me I feel right now I'm just like okay okay and stupid me thought that it was like really just an instant thing so I just put the spice packet in I put a bit of water and I put the noodles in it and it was disgusting so this is me doing it right okay you want to be very generous with the oil you put inside a saucepan and then I'm just throwing in like a small white onion and the recipe didn't call for this but I had a lot of shallots like lying around so I added some shallots too it's like in between garlic and onion like it has a really nice fragrant smell so we just added a little bit in and then immediately we're adding in a little bit of that mi soto paste. I want to say we put a good like half a packet in. You just really need to let the spices release via heat. So previously when I used water it was not as nice. What saved it a little bit was me using like one of those gnaw cubes after that to just add it in. But I feel like the chicken broth adds more of a depth of flavour. You don't have to fill it entirely with chicken broth. You can always dilute the chicken broth with a little bit of like boiling water so that's what I did and then you let it slowly come to a boil you also put in your chicken at this time so your chicken breast cooks at the same time that your mi soto like soup broth kind of cooks we let it simmer for a whole hour because we just weren't that hungry and then you take out the meat and you let it cool on the side and once the chicken is cooled you can start peeling them apart I do like shredding it it's pretty fun very therapeutic then very simple separately just cook a pan of water for the noodles although they seem like a lot they're not really so you want to put the entire pan it in. So if you're cooking for like a family of four, even more, like you have to serve accordingly. Lor. So one packet serves two. And then in the boiling water, it should only take about two to three minutes before you drain the water and put it into the bowl. So you can actually set the soup aside, there will be no soggy noodles in there. You can freeze them as leftovers or you can just put them in the fridge if you're going to finish them over the week. And then you can just garnish with your chicken breast and then your spring onions and all that stuff. And it's so good. It's so good. I was so happy when I finally 
ate it and I was like, I got it. If you want to try mee soto, like that's a really good way to try. Thursday for lunch, we made fried rice. I had leftover rice from Sunday. It had been like three, four days. It was really, really old. I knew I had to use it. I was a little bit worried. I throw in anything that I can find that is available. I feel like the only things that you really, really need are like garlic and egg. You can just use garlic and egg and cold like leftover rice and make the perfect fried rice. Next time, next time, I'll show you like seven different variations of fried rice. Oh my god, I love fried rice. Like all of the other dishes, you just start out with some oil. I like to use knife oil. Oh my god, knife oil should sponsor me, yeah, dude. I put in garlic, I put in onions if I have them. If I don't have them, I don't bother cutting them, I just put in garlic. I saute them, make sure they're fragrant, and then I dump in all of the meats that I have, of mushrooms that I have. If you have luncheon meat, oh, if you have spam, oh my god, throw that in. You want to put the meats and the mushrooms in because you want to make sure that they are actually cooked like before you add in all the other stuff because sometimes like with the heat distribution, it might be a little off. And mushrooms don't overcook, so you want them to like release their flavor as quickly as possible. And then you throw in all your veggies. So I throw in all of the old veggies that I sort of have lying around. I have a bag of like frozen mixed veggies, so peas, corn and carrot. And so I just put a little bit of that in. That's great for fried rice by the way, just like dumping a little bit in. And then I move the ingredients like a little bit to the border and then I crack the egg and then slowly like stir to incorporate it. So essentially you are beating the egg, you're frying it and you're sort of incorporating it with all of the food. And then I add the leftover rice. It shouldn't be frozen, it can be refrigerated but if you let it sit outside for like maybe 15 minutes, it'll be even better because then it breaks up a lot easier. You do need the spatula sometimes to like separate and you know declump them and then you just all toss it together with the different ingredients. I realized that if you put the rice first and the egg after, it becomes like mushy and clumpy because the egg never gets a chance to like properly cook. So I like to put the egg like right before I put in the rice and then I coat it. So the egg is cooked and then it's also coating the rice. So at this point I go to my usuals. Oyster sauce, light soy sauce. If you have that gnaw like um chicken stock that's like in a sauce, you can do that too. If you like fish sauce, do that too. I love sesame oil. At this point, you can add like spring onions, parsley, chives, any of these like aromatic like herbs. I do love a good like white pepper spritz in my rice. And just make sure that you turn up the heat for around like a minute or so and just really, really toss it and then turn it off and you're done. Because the rice is already cooked, all you need to do is heat it up and because it is like leftover rice, it's a little less starchy and it's a little more um, separated. Mavis was in charge of cooking, so she made a very nice Chinese dinner. We kind of discussed like what we wanted to do and because we've been cooking like quite extensively from Monday to Wednesday, we wanted to take a little bit of a chill approach on Thursday. Mara's cooker, it's like an electric lunchbox cooker. It's on Shopee, it's like $30. It's the best damn thing I've ever gotten for myself because it's a good like one to two person sort of thing. It has three slots for you to put in stuff and it has two tiers. So you can put your rice and then you can put your meat and then you can stack it on with another meat or you can stack on the rice. It will steam everything all at once and it's great. It's an auto off function, it never ever overcooks your stuff and it's just so good. So sometimes when I'm like really really lazy, I'll just make white rice and then I'll just put like some carrots or broccoli and it'll just all steam together and just be like a nice little simple meal. I can't exactly walk you through like every single step but Mavis made steam egg. Turned out a little bit more um, hard and less like watery than you know like the Taiwan places have. That's still a good effort, okay? Then we also made steamed tofu and underneath the bigger one, we made white rice. And then separately, we also cooked something a little quick stir fry that I feel like everyone sort of knows. It's just minced meat plus long beans. So remember that wonton filling, like you use minced pork, right? This one is also minced pork. So like I said, you can just buy a big batch and then you can just freeze. This time round, we didn't even marinate the meat beforehand. We just put a little bit of knife oil into it, heat it up, put some garlic, threw in the minced meat and then started our oyster sauce, fish sauce, soy sauce, white wine vinegar. We also have hua tiao jiu, which is like Chinese cooking wine and we just added some in. It adds like this really nice like acidity. It's basically what like white wine is to like coco vin. Like you know that kind of like white wine chicken. It just adds this nice brightness. It's very very nice. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of pepper. We had chopped up some long beans as well so we also put it right there and then you just stir fry until the beans are ready. You don't even need to blanch it or boil it beforehand and then it's done. That was it and that was so so good. And it's very hearty and it's very satisfying and we only needed to cook 
that stir fry. You know what I mean? Like everything else was prepared in the steamer. So if you have a rice cooker, you can also do that. I'm sure they have like little separation steamer things. So you can find that attachment probably hidden somewhere in your cabinet and then just pop it in. Put some steamed tofu, put some steamed egg. Love it. Ooh, Friday. Friday we tried a new recipe. It was Hungarian potato and sausage stew. It tastes as good as it sounds, okay? So we just started off by prepping the sausage and then we also started prepping the onions and the potato. We used russet potato because that was the one that was recommended. And then we just begin by melting the butter down with slightly higher heat. We let the butter bubble for a while and then we added in the sausages. As you can tell, oh my god, love sausages. And then we remove the sausages and then to the same batch of butter, we added all the potatoes so we can roast them and make them a little bit crispy on the edges. And then we add a little bit of chicken broth and a little bit of water and then we also threw in the cabbage. So cabbage in the soup is one of my favourite things because it sweetens up the soup, it's a very nice texture. It's very comforting and you can always get like quite a hearty like amount of it I feel without being like super super full. So like all stews you just let it stew <laughs> and simmer for an hour, an hour and a half and then whenever you want you can add the sausages back in and then let it stew for a little bit more and then that's the stew. I'm sure you throw in a little bit of salt and pepper in there also. The recipe also recommends you add a little bit of sour cream in but we didn't have that and what we have was like cream cheese spread so we added a little bit of cream cheese spread. It did seem to work it was very nice and we also added a little bit of white distilled vinegar that really helped like add a sense of like oof to like the stew I don't know so for Saturday's lunch it's a little bit of like a Frankenstein of all of the food that we've been eating the entire week so that is my biryani rice and I just had like a Taiwan sausage just hanging around so I air fried it I added a little bit of that stew and then here I am making some chrysanthemum tea it sounds so blasphemous to throw so many different cuisines into together but it was just like for lunch and I'm not like that picky of like a cuisine only eater. Don't keep cooking new stuff, okay? Finish your leftovers. And then for dinner on Saturday, we made Japanese curry. So this is something that we had sort of lying around because we had like the blocks that we got from Don Don Donkey like a couple of months ago. Oh my god, it hasn't been that long. Yeah, it has a lot of similar ingredients from what we've been making the entire time. So a lot of carrots, onions, potato. We wanted to use the potatoes up. We still had a little bit of that pork shoulder or pork loin like leftover so we just sauteed it separately and then we added it back and then started sauteing the vegetables and then added the curry and maybe the secret ingredient for a good Japanese curry with like surprising depth is to add a little bit of dark chocolate or coffee if you have it and then you just sort of stew and let it sit and Japanese curry is great because you can pair it with like anything. We made Japanese rice with it and then we also added a little bit of the seasoning that I got from Daiso but it's basically like bonito flakes and like a bit of seaweed, a bit of like seasoning and like toasted sesame seeds that sort of thing and then with the curry we put back in the pork and then we just drizzle it over and call it a day and it was so so yummy all right sunday we've got leftover rice from i want to say the hungarian stew so sunday's recipe i did film it but it's remarkably similar to the fried rice one that i've already shown you so i'm gonna teach you like another way of doing fried rice why not okay you're just gonna have to listen to me because i don't have anything filmed basically fried rice the exact same way for everything except at the end, you throw in a lot of kimchi and you sort of mix it around in its juices and you sort of let it fry. I love kimchi. I love fermented vegetables. Lots of health benefits and it also tastes really great too. It's just been so nice. Like kimchi fried rice has a very different vibe from normal fried rice. And I also like adding fresh kimchi into like my kimchi ramen. So like, you know, the ramyeon. If you add a little bit of like the fresh kimchi on top of that dry kimchi that they give you in the little packets, it really changes the flavor profile like so much. I don't know, it's really, really, really good. So yeah, those are my recipes for the week. There are also a ton of other things that I usually like to make that are very, very simple that I didn't get to show you in this episode, but don't worry, I'm coming back with more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out more recipes, I have some on my Insta story highlights as well. I show you how to make like bihun and stewed pork, which is like a classic favorite. A lot of people cook it, a lot of people like it, and it's so simple and so easy and so yummy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel I make new videos every week so don't forget to also turn on the bell to stay notified of my new posts and I'll see you next week Bye.